There are some guys who just have the knack. He was a happy man because he was doing what he loved. That was his typical thinking two miles ahead of anyone else. My father was a, a person whose curiosity was never sated. He was just wonderful. We were almost like peers. The world doesn't know enough about Dr. Steichen. He did so much. Surgeons utilized staplers as a routine part of their practice. But 50 years ago, that wasn't the case. In the early 1960s, three U.S. surgeons went behind the Iron Curtain on a cultural exchange program to the Soviet Union. When they came back, they brought with them a mechanical suturing device that had previously been unheard of in the Western world. These stapling devices were honed along with innovative techniques for their use in bowel and lung surgery by two surgeon pioneers and an entrepreneur. This is a brief story of one of those men, Dr. Felix Steichen. Born October 13, 1926 in Luxembourg, he was just shy of his 18th birthday at the conclusion of World War II. Dr. Steichen graduated first in his class from the University of Lausanne Medical School in Switzerland with a specialty in surgery in May 1953. He was fluent in German, in French, uh, Walloon and in, in uh, Belgium and so forth, and, and in Luxembourg too, as well as English. He loved his family, he loved his wine, he loved good food, and he loved the surgery. There was never a time when I didn't feel that my father's work was anything other than important. His enthusiasm uh, was uh, very embracing. Um, it became pretty obvious that Dad's contribution, I think, to um, surgery was not just being able to operate. We could sense he was really a prince in, the, in this place. Always will remember, never call him Professor. <laughs> professor is somebody who plays piano in a house of ill repute. <laughs> in 1957, he left Europe for further training at Johns Hopkins University and Baltimore City Hospital under the mentorship of the Chief of Surgery, Dr. Mark Ravitch. During his time in Baltimore, he was able to maintain a relationship with the girl of his dreams, as she happened to work for Air France. Since I was a stewardess, I could uh, visit him, and I was flying from Paris to New York at that time, so it was, uh, I, I would call him whenever I landed in New York, and then I would take the first train, plane, boats, whatever, to get to Baltimore. After training in Baltimore, he arrived in New York City in the summer of 1963, where he was primarily based at Lincoln Hospital in the Bronx. You talk to Felix Steichen, one of my good residents. Uh, he is now in New York, and uh, he can work with you on the improvements, and he can keep me informed. Typical for Lincoln Hospital, uh, that the lab tech didn't show up. And Dr. Steichen said, Turi, you can't stand there. You're going to have to hold clamps for me. You're going to have to help. So she didn't. Then Put he said, on now, a pair of gloves, girl, he said. Yeah, <laughs> and do this, do that. When we got all finished, he turned to me and says, you know, she has very good hands. Could she help me out on these things? I said, well, she only works for me part-time. Ask mm -hmm. her. No, he developed something called functional end-to-end -end anastomosis, which was very revolutionary at the time and is now a procedure that's being done daily worldwide. He and uh, Turi had set up a lab, dog lab, to test the new instruments which Leon Hirsch had been designing and uh, building. After seven years in the Bronx and a year in Switzerland, Dr. Steichen once again joined forces with Mark Ravitch, this time at the University of Pittsburgh. This is where they decided to hold stapling seminars for U.S. surgeons and travel around the world teaching the techniques they had developed with these revolutionary surgical tools. And before you knew it, there were seminars all over this country. I once received a letter from Dr. Sabaston at Duke. He said, um, we in academia normally are the ones who introduce new technology or new procedures. Uh, this phenomenon of surgical stapling went the other way. It's come from the general surgeon, from the general hospital, mm -hmm. and we in academia have not benefited this or understand it. Can we come up to your laboratories 
and, and learn how to staple properly. My attitude was, stapling is foolproof, but not damn foolproof. Felix and Ravitch had those courses which made stapling damn foolproof. After eight years in Pittsburgh, Dr. Steichen returned to New York, first as chief of surgery at Lenox Hill Hospital in the city, then to Westchester County to found the Institute of Minimally Invasive Surgery. So we met, I think it started in February of 1991. A whole year, he and I got together once a week and we would put together all the thoughts on how the institute would work. I think we were one of the three, maybe uh, five programs in the entire country that had started a fellowship in laparoscopy. I said, Leon, you know, you really should do something for Felix. Maybe he should have a, a chair. You should name a chair for yourself and uh, let Felix sit in it. He said, no. He said, I want it to be the Felician Station chair, and I will support it. How much do you need? The Institute of Minimally Invasive Surgery is still active today and has trained numerous fellows, three of which have been running fellowships themselves for as long as 10 years, training the surgical grandchildren of Dr. Steichen. Seeing him each evening at his desk writing, or, or on weekends writing papers, writing books, doing videos, there were plenty of opportunities where my father showed us what he was doing and, and, and that it was important in his own. We're like two peas in a pod always thinking the same things, supporting each other, and having French wives together. Our home lives were very tranquil. Yeah, he liked a good joke. <laughs> but his books are excellent. They are beautifully illustrated, they're yeah. lucid. I don't think it could be done better. No, he was just an, such an animal man. He was, he was someone that, uh, it was an honor to know. You hear that, Felix? <laughs> That's wonderful.